King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, is Jehovah Rapha, he's Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah El Shaddai, the all sufficient God, the fountain of living water, the lily of a valley, the ancient of days, the rock of ages, the lion in the tribe of Judah. We are here again. Father, we thank you for who you are. You are a good God. There is no one like you. Let's thank the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who was and who is to come. Let's worship him. He is God and God alone. He is the Lord of hosts, the King of Kings. Let's give glory and praise to him. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we worship you. Thank you for your word in Psalm 105, 1 to 5. The Bible says, give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know that he, what he has done. Has the Lord be good to you? Has he preserved your life? Has he saved you? Has he taken you from darkness to everlasting light? Let's begin to thank him. Let's sing to him. Sing to him. Tell everyone about his wonderful days. Exalt his holy name and rejoice. Worship him. Search for the Lord for his strength. Let's continually worship him. Remember the wonders he has performed, his miracles, the ruling he has given. As the Lord be good to you, thank him. Father, we worship you. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you for who you are in our life. Thank you for where you brought us from, where we are today and where you're taking us. God, the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not entered the hearts of men what you have in store for those who love you. Father, we thank you for your love. This season of your love, where you proclaim your love, because the Bible says that you gave your only begotten son, even unto us, O oh Lord, that we will not perish but have everlasting life. Father, we are thanking you for this passion week, that you gave your only begotten son, that no no sin, that he came to die for us. You gave it all for us. He finished it at the cross for us. Father, we are thankful. We are grateful that we did not die in our sin, that we are here today. That you took us, oh God, from that sinful state and you translate us into life everlasting. We are grateful, oh God. Father, we are grateful. Let the church of God thank him. Let the church of God praise him. Let the church of God worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He who made the heavens and the earth, he who sits upon the throne. You are God. No one, no one like you. Ah, Father, we bless your holy name. Ah, we bless your holy name. Father, we thank you, Lord, because you are God. We love you because you first love us. You love us. You sent your son to die for us. You sent your son, O oh God, to go on that lonely journey. Ah, even unto the cross and even unto the grave for us. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful, O oh God. We are the one who has come back to say thank you for that which you did for us on that day on the cross of Calvary. He took it all. He took all the pains. He took all the stripes. He took it all for us. He gave it all for us. Father, we are grateful. Who are we that you are so mindful of us? We thank you. We worship you. Ah, Father, we thank you. You are God and God alone. Ah, blessed be your name. We have every reason to thank you because we are still here. We are standing, O oh God. Ah, what the enemy meant for evil, you turn it around for a good. Ah, Kalibo Sahi Kalim. Father, the Bible says if they had known, they would not have killed the King of Kings. Because his death gave us light. His death gave us life. We are here today because he died for us. We are standing today because he gave it all for us on the cross of Calvary. Father, we are thankful. We are grateful. We have come in this Passion Week to just say, Father, we love you. We love you. We thank you for your holy begotten son that you gave on that day for us, O oh God. We thank you. Thank him. 
thank him, O oh God, for what he did for you. For what he did for me, he gave it all. He became weak so that we can be strong. He became poor that we can be rich. No matter what you are seeing today, know that God has given it all for you. He finished it all on the cross of Calvary. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Ye maha kalebo shekali kalema satare kelebo tsai. Ah, Father, we thank you. Let's begin to ask for mercy that God will have mercy on us. That He forgive us our sins that in any way that we have sinned against Him. Le ma kalebo shahi kaleba sotole kata. In any way that we have taken that which He did on the cross of Calvary for granted. Father, we are we are saying sorry, O God. In every way that we have taken that which God did, that He gave His only begotten Son for us. That we have taken it for granted. Father, Lord, we are saying we are sorry. Have mercy upon every one of us and forgive us our sins. Le makalibo shahi kaleba setele kaleba baba baba e kale kale ma e kerebo shahi amanta di ma e kale baba baba. Let your mercy speak for us. Let your mercy speak over judgment. Let your mercy speak. Let it speak for every member of our family, every member of this great church, city of David. Let your mercy speak in the name of Jesus Christ. Ye makalibo shahi amakalema ye kerebo sa ye kale baba 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 ye kale ba ye kale ba ye kerebo sa ta ye. Ah, Father, we thank you for your mercy. Let's begin to plead the blood of Jesus. Ye hi amakaleba sete ye. That blood that speak a better thing than the blood of Abel. Let's plead the blood upon this altar, upon the church, upon every member of the city of David. Let's begin to plead the blood, the blood of Jesus. The blood, the blood of Jesus. The blood that speak a better thing than the blood of Abel. Ah, kabush ye kaleba sete de ba ye kaleba soto de kaleba ba 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 ye kaleba ye kerebo sata ye. Ah, ba ye kaleba soto de kaleba ba ba ba. Ah, that blood, that blood that when the angel of death saw the Passover, that powerful blood, that blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. Ye ma kaleba setere kalima kabo she kerebo sahi ma he kaleba. The blood of Jesus Christ. Le kalima o sahi ma he kerebo shahi kaleba setere kata. Le me kerebo de ma he kaleba kobo she kaleba baba he. Ah kaleba sotere kata he. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to invite the Holy Spirit that the Spirit of living God will help us. That even as we pray, uh, that we know not what to pray, that the Spirit will help, oh God, even to pray. That we will pray the mind of Christ. That we will pray the mind of Christ even today. That we will not pray our means in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Make it a In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. We have two scriptures for today. As we continue in this uh, prayer for this week, the Passion Week, I'm reading from the book of Mark 11, 11 20, which says, The next morning as they passed by the fig tree he had cursed, and the disciples noticed. I read that from the roof. I took it from the very beginning, and then when I read through it, I saw a lot of things there. Because what we are praying today, we are talking about exercising authority. And when we are talking about exercising authority, what were the things that we need to exercise authority? And as I read through these scriptures, I found out a lot of things. And I read through Mark 11. Mark, uh, the first one is Mark 11:20. And Mark 11, 20 to 25. And the second one is Matthew 24, 12, 12 to 14. And as I read through Mark 11 to 25, we don't have time, I can't read, but there are certain things that, you know, strike me in that scripture. And why, how we can actually get that authority, that exercising the authority that God has given us. From that scripture in Mark, 11 21 10 21 to 20 you can see that you can see the first thing there that is there is faith he said because when the disciples asked when they saw it and said i said look rabbi the fig tree you cursed has withered and died and then jesus said to the disciples which are the conditions we must have the first thing he said have faith in god 
I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, be you lifted up and throw into the sea, and it will happen. And the second thing I got from there is that belief. And he said, you must really believe it will happen. And no doubt, that is the third thing that I brought out there is that don't doubt in your heart. And that was what Jesus said. He said, don't doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything if you believe and you perceive it will be yours. And when you are praying, you must first forgive. Another thing that you can have to have authority is to forgive. He said, believe one, the first thing, have faith in God. The second, really believe. The third, don't doubt in your heart. The fourth, believe you have received it. Because enough time we can pray but will not believe. And the fifth I brought out from that scripture is forgiveness. He said, forgive anyone that you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive you. And then in, the, in Matthew, in the other scriptures, like the Matthew 12, 14, I brought out another thing. Two things there, love and endurance. And this is what we're going to be praying. This is what we're going to focus on because this is actually what we need to exercise authority. So for in the next 15 minutes, we're going to be praying fervently that God Almighty, that the Almighty God will make, give us we will have faith in God. That we have great faith in God. That when we tell the mountains to move, it will move. Let's begin to pray in the language of the Spirit. That Father, Father, I ask, O oh God Almighty, that you give me the grace to have faith in you. That henceforth, O oh God, nothing will shake my faith in you. That I will believe in you. That my belief, O oh God, that when I say to the mountain, Ah, le kaleba shekade masoto le kaleba. Father, Lord, that that mountain will move. I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, let's begin to pray that God will give us, oh God, the grace, oh God, to really believe. And when in the scriptures you saw believe, not only did he say believe, he said really. Let's begin to ask God that yes, because that is the only way we can actually exercise authority. That when we have faith, strong faith, that nothing can shake our faith. And nothing can shake our faith. Let's begin to pray that God will give us the grace to believe him. That grace to have faith, strong faith in him. That no matter what is happening in your life today, no matter the circumstances that you're seeing, we can see it in the life of Abraham. That yes, even if when even in his life he knew that he was at the time he was he was not able to give back, but he believed against all hope that yes, he'll be able to fulfill. And God proved himself in his life that he made him the father of many nations. Let's begin to pray that God, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you give us the power and the grace, O Lord, that we'll have strong faith in you. That nothing will seize our faith, nothing will bring down our faith, no matter what is happening in our life. That we will have strong faith in you in Jesus' name. Our ah, Father, we ask, oh God, for the grace to believe you. Because we need that to exercise authority. Father, help me to believe. Help me to believe. Against all hosts, let me believe in you. Ah, let's begin to pray that, yes, we will not doubt in our mind. A lot of time we are praying, but even as we are praying, you have the doubt in your mind. You are saying, we need work, we need not work. Father, today, oh God, even from today, that I will begin to exercise the authority, Lord. Let me have strong faith. Let me begin to, Lord, remove every doubt. Every doubt, oh God, that when I come to you, I will come in boldness. I will come, oh God, with a strong mind, oh God. No doubt in you in the name of Jesus. Ah, Father, we are begin to pray for love and endurance. We can see this in the life of the Hebrew, the, the, the three Hebrew men. They enjoy it to the end. They believe in their God. They told the, the king, Lord, Lord, face to face. I said, even if our God did not save us, we will not bow down to you. Let's begin to cry that God give us that strong faith and believe that you gave to the to the to the three Hebrew men. And I tell you, they got that victory. They got, oh God, the authority. The first man appeared because they were able to believe. They had faith, strong faith in their God. Not only did they have faith and strong faith in their God, they were able to enjoy it to the end. They said, We will not bow to you. We will not bow to you. We will not bow to your God. That even if this God did not save us, we will not bow. And that is what gave them authority. And you can agree with me that even at the end, the king bowed to their God. Because they were able to enjoy it to the end. 
Father, give us, oh God, that place of endurance. Ah, no matter what we are going through, help us to hold fast on you. Help us to hold on to you. Help us to endure, oh God. Whatever the world throw, even at our face, whatever our circumstances throw at our face, we will not give in. We will not give in in the name of Jesus. So that the first man will appear in the name of Jesus Christ. I know that you need to endure to begin to exercise authority is law. I beg to ask that the love of God will envelop us. Jesus Christ. Ye maha kareba sete ne kareba soto te. Ah, me kerebo seta ye. The three Hebrew men, they love God so much that they said we will not bow to your God because we love our God. And when you love God, when you love something, whether the person can help you or not, you will hold on to the end. Ni ma kareba kubu she kareba bababa ye kerebo sa. La ke ma he kerebo sha ye kareba bababa. Ah, Father, we ask that the love of God will fill our hearts. The love of God will fill your church. So that we begin to exercise authority. So that we begin to tell the mountains to move. Ma and the mountain will move. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ye ma kadibo kadiba baba ba he kadibo sataye. Ne kadibo shi kadiba ki kadiba kobo de baba ba ye. Ah, Father, I pray that the love of God Almighty, that you will not wash strong cold. Begin to pray that pray that my love will, go, will not wash cold in Jesus' name. My love will not wash cold in the name of Jesus. Ye ma kadiba soto de kadiba ba. Me kadiba soto de kadiba. That we will enjoy to the end. Ah, Father, I pray. My love of you will not wash cold. In the name of Jesus Christ. My love for you will not wash cold. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, he kadeba soto de kadeba. Le ma kadeba soto de kadeba. Let's begin to pray that dear God, we will run this race and finish well in Jesus' name. Ah, kabo se kadima kadeba kida de baba baba ye. Le ma kadeba soto de kadema kobo de baba ye kadeba soto de kata ye. Le kadema se kadeba kika de baba baba ye kadeba soto. Le kadema kobo she kadeba soto de kata. Le kadema kobo baba baba ye kadeba kobo she kadeba baba. Le me kadeba se kadema kobo she kadeba baba baba ye kate se. Le ma kadema soto de kata ye. Ah, le kadeba soto. Another thing that I got from the scripture is forgiveness. To be able to exercise authority, we must forgive one another. In the name of Jesus, forgiveness. Forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive you. Let's begin to pray for the spirit of forgiveness. Father, I ask of God, Father, the Lord Almighty, that you give me your God, that I will be able to forgive. Forgive those that have offended me. Forgive me, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Just like my Father in heaven has forgiven me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ye ma kareba soto de kareba baba. Ye ma kareba soko de baba baba baba. He karebo shaka ye. Ni me kete se karebo sa he kareba baba. La he kareba soto. By the Lord I pray, O God. Le kareba soto de kareba baba baba baba. He kareba kobo she kareba baba baba he karebo sa. Ah, Father, I pray, O God, that Lord will bring me the spirit of forgiveness, O God. That I will forgive, O God. Ah, just as my Father in heaven has forgiven me. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the Lord, we thank you. Ye ma kadiba se te de ba ki kadiba kabaye. I ask for the spirit of forgiveness. Ah, to come upon every member of the city of David. I ask for the spirit of forgiveness to come upon us. That we be able to forgive those who have offended us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, ni ma kadiba soto de kadiba ba ba ba. Ni ma ha kadiba soto de kadiba ba ba. Ni ma ha kadiba soto de kata. Ah, let's begin to pray for the endurance. Because it is by endurance that every mountain will submit to you. Ah, Nebuchadnezzar was able to submit to the foot to the to the three evil men because they enjoyed to the end. And because they enjoyed to the end, that was why the fourth man, fourth man appeared. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ye ma kalibo she kareba baba ba. Ne ma ha kalima sata ne kalima kadiba soto. Ne me kerebo kare kareba baba baba he kerebo sata e. Ah, ne ma kalima kobo she kare. Ne ma kalima soto ne kareba baba 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 he kareba soto ne kata e. Ne me kete se kareba baba. Father Lord Almighty, Father help us O God, that everything that we have spoken unto, that we will have authority. 
that Lord, we will not front one sin of any of them. That we will love you. We will believe in you. We will not doubt you. In the name of Jesus. So let's open our mouth and begin to pray. Father, I pray that none of us will find one sin. Whether the road is called in Jesus' name. We will not be found one sin in the area of not believing you. We will not be found one sin in the area of doubting you. We will not be found one sin in the area of forgiveness. We will not be found one sin in the area of endurance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. The next prayer, bro, we're going to pray that spirit and empower us. We pray and they say, Father, that God will empower me with the spirit and empower me to exercise my authority in boldness and confidence and grace. Let's take that prayer to God. Now we have all the conditions that we need to be able to exercise authority. Let's begin to pray, Father. Oh, Father, Lord, fill me with your power and your spirit. Empower me, oh God, to exercise my authority with boldness and confidence and courage. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let me begin to exercise, O God. God, fill us, O God, with your spirit and empower us to exercise authority with boldness, confidence, and courage. Because that is what, that is what, O Lord, that the Hebrew, with the, 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 the three Hebrew men had, they had courage, O God. They were full of courage. They were full of boldness. They were full. Of, 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 of confidence. Father, in the name of Jesus. Ah, Fill us with confidence and boldness, O God. That our enemies will bow before you. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. And right now, let's begin to speak to every mountain. That every mountain will begin to move. That mountain that is your life in your life. I don't know what that mountain is. Is it sickness? Is it whatever it is that is standing before you? Let it begin to move. That authority that Christ had that he caused the fig tree. He said that which we knew we were able to we'll be able to do, even that greater than what he did. Begin to speak to every fig tree, every fig tree in your life, everything that is standing between you and your breakthrough. Everything. Because Jesus was hungry. And when he looked at the tree, he was hungry. Because there was no fruit in that tree. He said, no man will eat out of you. Today, begin to cause everything that is standing between you and your breakthrough. That begin to tell them to crumble. In the name of Jesus Christ. That mountain of sickness. Speak to the mountain to come down. That mountain of, of, of disease, of infirmity. That mountain of poverty, that mountain of lack, ah, even in this week of passion, let them begin to crumble. Let them begin to crumble. Let them begin to crumble. In the mighty name of Jesus, with the authority that Christ has given us, I want you to look at that mountain that you are facing right now and say to the mountain, ah, be that removed. Be removed. Be removed. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. When I was actually, actually
actually reading the story of the three Hebrew men, the three Hebrew men, and the king. I read that part where the Bible said that the fire was so hot because the king said they should make the fire so hot. The fire was so hot that the men that threw them into the fire, they themselves did not did not did not survive it. But at the later part, I now read where the, the king drew close to them when he saw the fourth man. He drew close to them, but the fire did not touch him. And I started to ask the Holy Spirit, how come this fire did not touch? If the fire was able to destroy the men that threw them, how come the fire did not touch? And the Holy Spirit said that God wanted to keep that king so that the king would bow before them. Because the Bible says in the presence of your enemy, in the, he will prepare a table before us in the presence of your enemy. And that's why that fire did not come. That every enemy of your life, everyone that is saying you are, that, that you will not get there, they will be alive and they will see you swear. And that is what God did for these three Hebrew men. God kept King Nebuchadnezzar and told, told us at the time they came out, he bowed before their God. God will keep our enemies so that they will bow before the king that will serve. Ah, because I, I, it, it, was, it, it baffles me. How come that fire was able to kill the men? But the fire did not touch King Nebuchadnezzar because God had a purpose that he knows that that king and everything is so, subject, they will come and bow to this Hebrew man. Begin to speak that everything that has bring you down will begin to bow before you. Everything that begin to God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. That same people that say that Lord, you will not make it. They will see you get to the top and they will praise the king of kings and the lord of lords. They will praise your God. They will come and ask you where is the God that you serve because they want to serve your God. That is why that fire did not cross King Nebuchadnezzar. Father, we thank you. Begin to pray that, your, that the miracle that God will do in your life this season will cause your enemy, will cause those who want to see you fail to come before you and say, I want to serve your God. Who is this God that you're saving? They want to know why you are jumping. They want to know why you are rejoicing. That is the miracle that God is going to do in the mighty name of Jesus. And lastly, that same fire that was supposed to have killed them. Remember when he, the fourth man appeared? He saw them, when the fourth man appeared, and the king saw them, and he told them to come out. But remember when they threw these people into the fire, they were tied, but they became unbound. Because that same fire that was meant to kill them was that same fire that destroyed everything that was bound in them. Ah, begin to pray. This is your last prayer point. That everything that the enemy meant for evil for you will turn around for you for good. That same fire, that cake was the one that loose whatever was bound in them and they were set free. The fire did not touch their clothes, but the fire unbound them. That when the king told them to come out, there was nothing tying them down. Ah, that same thing that the enemy meant for evil for you will turn around for your good. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, we give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. What the Lord has done for me. Tell it all what the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell it all what the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell it all. He saved me and washed me with joy. So I can shout hallelujah. I can shout hallelujah. I can shout praise the Lord. So I can shout. to have faith in God, for the privilege to take authority and exercise our authority over every mountain standing against us, 
Let's give him praise and give him honor and glory forever and ever. Let's thank the Lord God Almighty for the privilege to forgive all those who have offended us and be able to stand before him and be able to exercise our authority. Father God, we give you thanks and we give you praise. Thank you, Father God, for grace that henceforth we do not doubt. Thank you, Lord God, for removing every trace of doubt, every plant you have not planted, every root of doubt away from our lives in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father God Almighty. To you be all the praise, honor, and glory forever and ever. For in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. The word of God declares on this same day, about 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ said in Mark 11, 24. Mark 11, 24. He says, therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, believe you when you pray, when you pray. We are here to pray. He says one thing we must do when we pray is we must believe we, that you will receive. Believe that you receive and you will have. How do I believe that I receive? Simply by saying, I believe, I receive. So I want us to go again, go before the Father in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Everything that we have asked for, all those mountains that we have asked are to be removed and cast into the sea. Go to the Father and begin to declare, Lord, I believe I receive right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe I receive everything that I have asked of you. Lord God Almighty, this very day, this very prayer session, I believe I receive all that I've asked, Father God Almighty. I believe I receive your very best into every area of my life. I believe I receive, oh God Almighty, every mountain standing against me has been cast into the sea, never to be seen again. I believe I receive, Lord God, joy unspeakable, full of glory. I believe I receive your very best into every aspect and facet of my life. I believe I receive my very, your very best into every aspect and facet of your church, the city of David. I believe I receive your very best, O God Almighty. We believe we receive your very best over every family represented here. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. Blessed be your name, O God. Hallowed be your name, Father. To you be all the honor and glory forever and ever. For in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Furthermore, on this day, about 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ went into the temple. After they had seen the fig tree, he moved from there into the temple. And on that day in the temple, there were certain profound teachings that Christ gave on that day over 2,000 years ago. There were certain pronouncements that he made. But first of all, he, had, he gave them six different parables, six parables on one day. And the first parable he gave them was the parable of the two sons when they questioned his authority. They questioned his authority. So we're going to, and there, we're going to, Right now, we're going to as we're exercising authority, we must know the basis of our authority and the reason for our authority. The basis of our authority is very simply in based on the word that Christ has given to us as his disciples. We are members of the body of Christ. As he is, so are we in this world. Brethren, we must know who we are. We must not give in to any form of identity crisis. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Luke chapter 10, verse 19, the word of God declares, Behold, I give you the authority. Begin to receive the authority that Christ has given to us from this moment forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Authority to trample on serpents and, on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Begin to command that every power of the enemy, every work of the devil concerning you, concerning all that pertains to you, that they are destroyed in Jesus' mighty name. That from this moment forward, nothing shall by any means hurt you. No plan, no force, no contrary power shall have any negative impact on your life from this day forward and the lives of all our loved ones and upon the church in the city of David. Let's begin to exercise and receive our authority 
and begin to trample upon every work of the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Because for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Nothing shall by any means hurt us. And in any area where we have been hurt or whatever has been lost as a result of enemy action, due to not knowing our authority, let's begin to command a restoration, double restoration of everything that we have lost. Every good thing that we have lost be doubly restored to us now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, precious Father. Hallowed be your name, O God. To you be all the praise, honor, and glory forever and ever. For in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have prayed. Amen. The first parable Jesus gave on that day when he entered the temple was the parable of the two sons. And it's very simply that there were two sons. One, the father, and that we see in Matthew chapter 22, Matthew chapter 22, 21, Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 to 31. Amen. This father came to them very simply and said, look, send them on, on an errand. The first son said, no, I will not go and went. The second one said, I will go and did not go. Jesus then asked them a question. Who is the one that obeyed the father? They said the first. They said the first. And I want you to, I want to us to reflect upon our lives. What sort of son are you? Both of them were sons of the father. What sort of son are we? Are we those sons by the words of our mouth and not by the deeds of our hands? Let's go before the Father and begin to repent of the times that we have been hypocritical, the times we have said things to him, things that we would do and didn't do them. And let's begin to receive grace right now to be diligently obedient to our Father from this time forward to be diligently obedient to him from this moment forward, to do his will so that his will will be established upon the earth and his name exalted and glorified. Thank you, precious Father. Hallowed be your name, O God. For in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have prayed. Amen. Second parable Jesus shared on that day was parable of the wicked vine dressers. Here, Jesus Christ talks about, and that we see in verses 33, verses 33 downwards on to verse 43. There Jesus talks about a man who planted a vineyard and leased it to people, to vine dressers. And then when it was time for him to receive the value and what they had agreed that they would pay him, the Bible tells us, Jesus Christ in this parable in verse 35 said they, they beat some of his servants, verse 35, verse 36. They killed some, they stoned some, and then last of all, in verse 37, he said they will respect his son and he sent his son to them. And of course, we know the son is Christ Jesus. It was a parable that Christ was using to, to talk about, to, to basically tell the people of Israel what was happening and what was going to happen in the next few days. And then we see that the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 42 declared that the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. I want us to pray right now and begin to declare. I don't know what it is where you have been rejected. I don't know where it, what, it, what it is you have been doing that has not worked till now. Begin to declare in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God Almighty, let your marvelous work be manifested in every area of my life. From this moment forward, O oh God Almighty, let your marvelous work be manifested in every area of our lives. Matthew 21, verse 43. Matthew 21, verse 42. Lord, let your marvelous work be made man manifest in every area of our lives to the glory of your holy name. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Verse 43. Jesus Christ was talking to the Jews there in the next verse in verse 43. So he told them, what has happened already and what has happened till now that the kingdom will be taken from them the kingdom of god which is righteousness of peace and joy in the holy spirit will be taken from them and given to a nation bearing fruits of it bearing fruits of the kingdom no wonder in first peter chapter 2 verse 9 he says we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation we are that nation the church is that nation bearing the fruits of the kingdom are you bearing the fruits of the kingdom begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for the kingdom that I've received. Lord God Almighty, I receive grace to be able to bear fruits of the kingdom, fruits of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. 
from this day forward as individuals, as families, and as a church to the glory of your holy name. Thank you, precious Father. Hallowed be your name, O oh God. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. The third parable is the parable of the wedding feast. Three parables in one day. Third parable. Usually Jesus would give one parable in a day. Or one parable that would be the neighbor. But here he had six parables. The third one is the parable of the wedding feast. And on that day, this day, about 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ told them about a feast in which the kingdom of, he said, kingdom of heaven, Matthew 22, verse 2, he says the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. And how many of us know that the king of kings has arranged a marriage? We are the, the church is the bride of Christ. Amen. And he invited various people to come. And the people he invited, after they had agreed to come, now began to give excuses. And at the end of the day, they, he sent out servants to them to invite them. They made light of it. And they killed and destroyed the servants. So he now went. And of course, those people were not worthy. They were taken out of the way. And then he invited a new set of people. However, of those new set of people who invited, those are those of us who were before called Gentiles, who are now the people of God. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, verses, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 10, that we who are not a people are now the people of God. We who are not obtained mercy have now obtained mercy. Stretch out your hands to heaven and begin to thank him that you are now one of the people of God. You have now obtained mercy. Thank you, Father God Almighty. The Bible tells us in that parable that, however, during that wedding feast, there was a man who came in without wedding garments. What is the wedding garment? That talks about righteousness, faithfulness, and obedience to the will of God. Righteousness, faithfulness, and obedience to the will of God. Never forget that we are here by grace through faith. But we must never take off our wedding garments. We must continue to be clothed in his righteousness. Begin to receive grace right now to be clothed in the righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Begin to receive grace that from this moment forward, we will not take off our wedding garments. He says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Father God, I receive grace. We receive grace to live holy before you, to walk worthy of you, to be fully pleasing to you, fruitful, strengthened and filled with all the fullness of God. All our days and in all our ways. Thank you, precious Father. For in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. After those first parables, the Pharisees then came in verse 15 of Matthew chapter 22 to him. And they wanted to entangle him in his speech. And they asked him a trick question. And they asked him, should they pay taxes or not? We all know that story very well. And Jesus Christ said to them in verse 21, he says, Render therefore to Caesar. It was on today, this day, that we are celebrating. I said it about 2,000 years ago. Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God. What are the things that are God's? The tithe is the Lord's. The offering is the Lord's. Let's begin to receive grace. To be able to render to God the things that are God, and begin to and be able to render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. What belongs to government will give to them. What belongs to God will give to him. And in any way we have not rendered to God the things that are his, let's begin to receive grace. That from this day forward, mercy, Lord God Almighty, for times we have not been faithful in the payment of our tithes and giving of our offerings. Father God, we receive grace from this day forward, O God Almighty, that Lord God will be faithful in rendering to you the things that belong to you. The tithe is yours. And Lord God, to be able to give offerings to the glory, to Lord God, for the expansion of your kingdom here on earth. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Those were the first group of people that came to him were the Pharisees, the first set of adversaries. The second set of adversaries, the second set of religious people that came to him that same day in verse 23 of Matthew chapter 22, where the Sadducees, those ones who believe that there is no resurrection, Jesus Christ told, gave them a parable, they gave them a, they gave Jesus Christ a trick question again. And Jesus Christ told them that not believing in the resurrection is a great mistake is a great mistake. So let's begin to pray right now. If we know that there will be a resurrection, so we know that this world is only for a limited time, it will give us a body in our hearts to win souls. Many are not winning souls because they are like the Sadducees. They don't believe there's a resurrection, so they don't believe heaven is real, hell is real. Let's begin to receive grace that Lord God Almighty will 
confess and repent of Lord God Almighty of every time Lord God we have not believed and acted as if there is a resurrection Lord God Almighty the times we have not been passionate for souls oh God please have mercy on us help us oh God Almighty Lord God Almighty to be passionate for souls Lord God on that last day we will not be found missing in your kingdom in heaven we will not be found will not be found wanting from this moment forward in Jesus mighty name thank you precious father hallowed be your name O God for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen amen after this in verse 35 another group came to him the Lord describes and one of them describes a lawyer came to him and asked him a question and said teacher verse 36 which is the great commandment in the law there were 600 over 616 commandments that the Jews that were in the law of Moses the, which one is the great commandment? Verse 37, Jesus answered. And thank God for our pastor that prayed earlier. We've already dealt with it, but we'll deal with it even in a greater dimension. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Verse 38, This is the first and great commandment. Verse 39, And Jesus Christ went further because our God is able to always do exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask or think. He says, The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Stretch out your hands to heaven and begin to receive grace. To love the Lord with all of your heart, your soul, and your mind. The grace to be able to love our neighbor as ourselves. In the name of Jesus Christ, from this moment forward, in ever increasing measure, that as our days, so shall our love ever increase, as our days increase. Bible declares in Philippians 1 9, Philippians 1 9 to 11. Philippians 1, 9 to 11, that we will increase and abound in love in the city of David. City of David is where the love of God reigns. Father God, we pray that we will increase and abound in love in the city of David. And that our love will abound more and more in knowledge and in all discernment to the glory of our God. Thank you, precious Father. Hallowed be your name, O God. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed verse 40 and verse 41 of that Matthew chapter 22. The Pharisees now came to Jesus and Jesus now asked them his own question. They had been asking him, he now asked his own question. On this same day, over about, about 2,000 years ago, he said, what do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? And they said, the son of David. Verse 47, verse 43. Then he said, how then can David call him Lord? Verse 44, the scripture our sister alluded to where she prayed and she said, God made the king prepare the table for his own people in the presence of the enemies. We're going to pray right now in Jesus' name. Bible said, we are members of the body of Christ. As Christ is, so are we in this world. We are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So we're going to pray. He says, God said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Begin to pray right now. Father, according to your will, now make every enemy, every adversary of your church, every enemy of our souls, our footstool in Jesus' precious name. Lord God, as only you alone can subdue all our enemies before us. Fight for us as only you alone can. Thank you for fighting for us so far the first 12 weeks of this year. Father, these remaining 40 weeks of this year, as only you alone can, fight for us, O God Almighty. Subdue all our enemies and make them our footstool to the glory of your holy name. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Poverty is an enemy. Sickness is an enemy. Lack is an enemy. Barrenness is an enemy. Begin to pray again with understanding and begin to exercise authority. Begin to declare, Lord God, I receive your Lord God Almighty power, Lord God Almighty, I receive, Lord God Almighty, your grace. I receive, Lord God Almighty, you, I, your blessing, Lord God Almighty. I thank, I receive your victory. I receive your triumph. Thank you, Father, for subduing all my enemies and making them my footstool from this moment forward. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Verse 23, Jesus Christ, or, or in Matthew chapter 23, Jesus Christ now spoke about the hypocrites and he pronounced seven woes upon the hypocrites. And then in verse 37 of Matthew chapter 33, Jesus Christ lamented over Jerusalem. We're going to pray right now in Jesus' precious name. The Bible says here that Jerusalem was not willing. And because Jerusalem was not willing, Jerusalem became desolate. 
we're going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Stretch out your hands to heaven and begin to receive grace. That Lord God Almighty, I receive grace to be willing, Lord God Almighty, to be willing and obedient to you all my days and in all my ways. In every time when I have not known, Lord God Almighty, the time of my visitation, every time I have not known these times and seasons and paid attention to you, Lord God, have mercy on me. Father God, I pray that from this day forward, O God Almighty, we shall be willing and obedient all our days and in all our ways. Thank you, precious Father, for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Matthew chapter 24, still on that, happened on that same day. And there it talks, Jesus Christ said, talked about what was going to happen. Amen. And a lot of what he said in Matthew 24 have already happened. But there are some that will happen in the second coming of our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. He says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 30, he says, Then the sign of man will appear in heaven. He says, Then they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. In the name of, let's pray right now in Jesus' name. That Lord God Almighty, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that while your second coming, none of us shall be found missing. We will not be left behind. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, at your second coming, we shall be rapturable. We shall remain rapturable. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The fourth parable was the par parable of the fig tree. Fourth parable on that day. Parable of the fig tree. And there, Jesus Christ says, and he said in verse 32, verse 32 of Matthew 24, he says, parable of the fig tree. And there, Jesus Christ says, now learn this parable from the fig tree. When the branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Let's begin to give priority to the word of God. Amen? The word of God is, the, is more real and is the only thing that endures forever. Let's begin to prioritize the word of God. That from this day forward, we will give priority to the word of God. We will daily put, it says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Father God, we receive grace to give priority to your word, to study your word diligently, to be faithful, diligent hearers and doers of your word. Thank you, precious Father. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The ingredient for faith is the word of God. Let's begin to receive grace, to receive, Lord God Almighty, to abound in the the study and on that and walking in the word of God all our days and in all our ways. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus Christ's mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Matthew chapter 25 talks about the fifth parable that Jesus Christ shared on that day. And it's the parable of the ten virgins. Now talking about the church, that the mere fact that we are in, in, in the body of Christ, there is one thing that is required from us. And that is in verse 13 of Matthew chapter 25. It says, watch therefore, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Let's begin to receive grace, to be watchful in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to be watchful from this day forward. It says, watch and pray that we will not be found, we will not be lackadaisical, we will be watchful and faithful all our days and in all our ways from this moment forward. We will not be complacent. We will not be complacent from this moment forward. Thank you, Father. Hallowed be your name, O God, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The final parable in Matthew chapter 25, verse 14, is the parable of talents. There it talks about the parable of talents. And Jesus Christ says there that the master gave, we know the story very well, he gave three servants different talents according to their ability, each one according to their own ability, some with one five, one three, one two, and he told them, occupy till I come. Let's begin to receive grace, that which we will occupy until he comes. We will not be found, not that on, we will be on that last day, we ourselves will hear, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. Father God Almighty, that we will not be complacent, we will not, Lord God Almighty, we will be diligent, we will occupy 
we will be all that you have ordained for us to be. Everything that Christ paid for shall be made manifest in every area of our lives. From this moment forward, we give you praise and we give you thanks. Blessed be your name, O God. Hallowed be your name, eternal rock of ages. Thank you, precious Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Finally, on this day, 2,000 years ago, about 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ said, the basis of this CSR that the church is known for, that the city of David is known for, Jesus Christ instituted it. And there in Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, verses 31, 31 to 44, he talks about the Son of Man coming in his glory and all nations gathered to him. And he said, he will say to those on his right, he will set them as sheep on his right hand, goats on his left. Verse 34, he will say to those on his right hand, come you blessed of my father into the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And then the righteous will answer him saying, verse 37, Lord, when did we see you? And Lord Jesus Christ will spend and the king will answer in as much as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren. You did it to me. And then those on the left, he will say, depart from me, you cursed. Verse 41, into the everlasting fire prepared, not for you, but for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was naked, I was in prison. And they will answer, Lord, when did we see you? And we didn't do it. He says, in as much as you didn't do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. He says, then this will go away into everlasting punishment. Verse 46, but the righteous into eternal life. Let's begin to pray right now in Jesus' precious name. That Father God Almighty, we receive grace, Lord God Almighty, to faithfully dedicate ourselves, O oh God, all our days and in all our ways. From this moment forward, that on that last day we will hear, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Father God Almighty, we rededicate ourselves to the Christian social responsibility, Lord God Almighty, of this church and of your church and of your body worldwide. Father God Almighty, we receive grace that, Lord God Almighty, we will enter into the fullness of all that you have ordained for us and all that you have done in our lives shall be permanent. Father God, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you thanks. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Finally, we're going to pray that our love will not wax cold in Jesus' precious name. And we're going to again command, for those of us who were not here during the first set segment, amen. It was today that the Lord Jesus Christ said to the, in Mark 11, 23, Mark 11, 23, he says, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. We're going to exercise our authority and begin to command every mountain standing against the manifestation of the glory of God in every area of our lives to be permanently removed and cast into the sea. Exercise your authority now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, begin to decree and declare it so in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Father. Hallowed be your name, O God. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name we have prayed. That which the Lord has done in our lives shall be permanent. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. And amen. Let's begin to cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to start our service. Amen. But firstly, let's begin to cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus Christ. Even as we come before the presence of the Most High God right now, everything the Lord has done for us today shall be permanent in Jesus' precious name. Let's begin to receive a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit of power, the Holy Spirit of wisdom and understanding, spirit of counsel and mind, spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord to fall afresh upon us right now. Every ungodly burden that we came in here with be removed from our shoulders, every ungodly yoke removed from our necks and be destroyed by reason of the anointing. Thank you, precious Father. Hallowed be your name, O God. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name we have prayed. Amen. This is still the month of the fourth man and another name for the fourth man is the word of God. Psalm 107 verse 20 declares, tonight we are going to receive the ministration from the, of the fourth man, the word of God. He says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Begin to stretch out your hands to heaven right now. Begin to receive 
the ministry of the word and begin to declare, Lord God, by reason of your word of the fourth man. Fourth man, Lord, I receive all around health and healing right now. I receive deliverance from every form of destruction. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, even now, thank you, precious Father. Hallowed be your name, O God. To you be all the praise, honor, and glory forever and ever. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord.
Father, we worship you. Father, we love you. We adore you. We bless you, Jesus. We worship you. In your own words, just begin to worship the Lord of hosts and bless him. Hallelujah. And all the saints and angels, they bow before your throne. And all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing. You are worthy of it all, Jesus, you are worthy of it all, Jesus, for from you are all things, and to you are all things, you deserve the glory. You are worthy of it. 
of kings and the Lord of lords. His names are beautiful for all situations. Begin to call him by his names, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the ancient of days, the I am that I am. He's the soon coming king. He's our shield. He's our buckler. He's our exceeding great reward. He's the ancient of days. Oh, he's the one who is the Lord of hosts. The one who is the Jehovah Jireh, the one that provides for us. He's our defender. He's our defense. Oh, just begin to magnify his holy name. Give him all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. The Bible says he has a name above all names. Exalt his name forever right now. Our gathering is not unto man, but unto God. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We bless your holy name. We thank you for the privilege of being called sons and daughters of the Most High God. Thank you, O Lord, even for the relationship we have with you. King of glory, we thank you, O Lord, because no one can come to you unless you draw them. Thank you for drawing us close even today in Jesus' mighty name. King of glory, O Lord, no one comes to your presence and lives the same way. You know, you have something awesome even for us today in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we commit to Lord the rest of the service into your hands. We say that which you have preordained to be done, do it in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Meet us at the point of our expectations, O oh Lord. At the end of this meeting, let us know that we have had an encounter with you. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. the name of the Lord. Let's appreciate the best choir in the kingdom. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Before you sit, why don't you just greet at least five people and say, God bless you. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And now can we wave to all our members online. We have a huge online following. Amen. We love you also. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I'd like to... Um, Recognize in our midst um, uh, tonight um, uh, one of our senior pastors of the redeemed Central of God uh, from the Americas, our own very dear Pastor Bayo. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus. Pastor Bayo Adewale, he and his wife, Pastor, the Jesus House Chicago. So, anywhere you are in Chicago, anytime you are in Chicago, that is the place to be. Once more, let's just celebrate. Uh, one of our leaders in the family, our papa family, and the redeemed Christ of God. Uh, we really do apologize for the heat. Um, I, I'm surprised because um, it's not supposed to be like this. How many of us can feel the heat? There's a difference. Amen? Hallelujah. That tells you you must not go to hell. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, we're working on it, and I'm sure that by the end of the service, it'll be cooler. Uh, but if you want to move near any fan, there are fans around us, let's just manage it. And um, God will still bless us in Jesus' mighty name. Let's put our hands together as we invite to minister Pastor G. Day. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you sure that is for God, the King of all kings, and the Lord of all lords? Some have hands but cannot clap. You have hands and you can clap. I believe it can be better and louder. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God in the highest name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the because you are the reason for this season. We thank you, Lord Almighty, for you are the death and the resurrection. Thank you, Lord Almighty, for the salvation of our souls. 
Thank you, Lord Almighty, for your preservation over our lives. Thank you so much for your church. That your church is marching forward and the gate of hell cannot prevail. Father, we say, be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, uh, you are the word right from the beginning. We want to study you today. We ask, O oh Lord, that through your word, you be revealed to us. And everyone saying amen, both here and those online. Father, we ask that at the end, our lives will never remain the same. Thank you, precious Father. And glory be to your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the people of the Lord will say, Now let somebody shout hallelujah. If you are grateful to witness yet another Easter season, shout hallelujah. Wow, we bless the name of the Lord for today. I just want to say a very big thank you to my father in the Lord and our mother in the Lord, Pastor Heidi, as we fondly call him, and Pastor Dr. Siju Leomadi for this privilege. Please help me celebrate God in their lives. Thank you so much, sir. I do not take this for granted. And I also want to just say, uh, I want us to help me put our hands together for Pastor Bayo. If you only you understand, your clapping would have been better. <laughs> Amen. Uh, what a rare privilege. Uh, to have the generous of God sitting, listening to a small pastor like me. But all the same, I know, I'm so confident this evening because I know uh, I have their backings and uh, I have the backup of the Holy Spirit. And I believe tonight the Lord will bless us richly in Jesus' name. So thank you, sirs, for the opportunity. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, uh, as we all know, this month we've been discussing the fourth man. And uh, this week also has been the, the week of passion of Christ. As we all know, this is the season Christ came and to die for mankind. And so today, I will want to stick to that topic, the fourth man, who coincidentally also happens to be the death and the resurrection himself that we are celebrating his anniversary. I think we should put our hands together once again for Jesus for that. So I'll be taking my test from the book of Daniel chapter 3, very lengthy, but probably will be skipping as it comes. And I will be approaching this um, topic maybe from a little uh, from a, a, a very different dimension by the way various men of God have spoken so greatly on this subject uh, the front lining that is our own dear Pastor Heidi so I believe we have all been richly blessed but today I want to look at this story from the perspective of commitment so uh, this evening we'll be talking about the dividends of dedication or commitment, as we'll call it. And like I said earlier, we'll be considering the same Bible passage that we've been looking at since the beginning of this month. Daniel chapter 3, I read from verse 1. Uh, maybe I will read from the NIV version so that we'll be able to have a probably better understanding of what we're going to talk about. So we're talking about the dividends of dedication. I'm taking my test from Daniel chapter 3 from verse 1 all through to verse 30. But like I said earlier, we'll be skipping as it were. Daniel chapter 3 from verse 1 says, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 60 cubit high and 6 cubit wide and set it up on the plain of, the, of Dura in the province of Babylon. 
He then summoned the satraps, perfects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he has set up. Maybe we jump to verse 4. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, Nations and people of every language, that is, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, scissor, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of, the, of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, like we mentioned earlier, maybe we jump to verse 8. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, may the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of on, like we mentioned earlier, you know, of gold, I mean, of all those stuff, must worship the image of God. Verse 11. Or maybe we jump to verse 12. It says, But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Verse 13, furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. To this, so these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach? Meshach and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up. Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, zither, la, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then, what God will be able to rescue you from my hand. Verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Verse 19, then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude towards them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Mekash, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Verse 23, and these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, wearing, three, wearing their three men that were tied up and threw into the fire, they replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of God, of the gods. 
Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servant of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the sastraps, perfect governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw, I say today, by the reason of this season, your mockers will see the glory of God. If only your amen will be loud, I said they will see in the name of Jesus. He said, they saw that the fire had no harm, had not harmed them, their bodies, nor was a hair of their, of their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Enemies will celebrate your God. I say your mockers will follow you to know your God. Very, very soon in the name of Jesus. He says, then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servant. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, verse 29, I decree that the people of any nation or language who may say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces, and their houses be turned into piles of rubbles, for no other god can save in this way. Verse 30, the last verse. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his words in Jesus' name. If only your amen will be louder. We said this evening we're talking about, we're considering dedication. And precisely we're looking at the dividends, the profit, or the result of dedication. There are definite dividends of dedication to God, without doubt. As you could see from the book of Isaiah chapter 49, verse 19. Isaiah 49, verse 19 says, I have not spoken in secret, in a dark place of the heart. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. There is no wasted pursuit of God. That's what we're saying. The second thing we need to just understand is that God is not a user, but a rewarder of people. According to Hebrews 11, verse 6, Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So based on these two points, that's what I want to just consider briefly. What are those dividends? What are those things we stand to derive, we stand to gain, when we stand committed to God? Another word for commitment is dedication or devotion. And I pray as we journey into this, the Lord will speak to us and he will bless us in the name of Jesus. So from the above very lengthy Bible passage we read, we discover certain things. Number one, we discover distinction. Distinction. According to Malachi chapter 3 verse 18, Malachi 3 18, Malachi chapter 3 verse 18 says, Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth, it, serveth him not. In the NIV um, version, the NIV version of the same scripture says, it says, and you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. What are we saying in essence? To stand for God is to stand out in life. These three men took a very unpopular decision. Even though 
the majority, in certain cases, might not be right. They chose to distinguish themselves. They chose to be different. They chose not to do what is common, what others are doing. No wonder the book of Matthew chapter, three, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Perhaps Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have understanding of this. So the first thing we discover from that story is that they chose to be different. Secondly, we deduce from this story that man was created by God. And for God alone. We are created for God. We are created by him and for him alone. According to Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 says. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure they are and were created. So we are created by God for his own purpose. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego understood this. Also in the book of 2 Kings chapter 17, 2 Kings 17 from verse 34, they understood the commandment of the Lord. 2 Kings 17, it says, Unto this day they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord, neither do they after their statutes or after their ordinances, or after the law and commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel. Verse 35 says, With whom the Lord had made a covenant and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power, and a stretch out arm, him shall you fear, and him shall you worship, and to him shall you do sacrifice. So, the essence of our creation, why God, Jesus, came to die for us over 2,000 years ago here on earth is so that we can serve him, so that we can worship him. Praise the name of the Lord. No wonder Daniel 11, 32 b Then Daniel 11, 32 b says, But they that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. So to do exploit for the Lord, it means you must be strong. Praise the name of the Lord. Ephesians 6.10, Ephesians 6.10 says, it says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It says, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Praise the name of the Lord. The third thing we understand from this story is that audacity in the spirit is not a luxury. We must be audacious in the spirit. Fear grants permission to the devil to do his works. You remember in the course of that story, the king invited them and asked them by himself, is it true that you were told, I mean, you said you will not worship my God? And he threatened them. But even at that, these three Hebrew men were audacious. They were not careful to tell the king their stand and their position in the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Perhaps you have been going through situations of life that have been looking, you know, that have been harassing, that have been intimidating to you. I want you to understand that Satan will always want to introduce fear as if that will not happen. Fear paralyzes faith. That's what we're saying in essence. And fear will make you doubt God and rather believe the lies of the devil. But these men understood. They were courageous. They stood firm. I pray that the Lord will give us the spirit of boldness in the name of Jesus. Job chapter 3 verse 25. Job 3 25 says, For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. So what you fear dominates you. 
So in a season like this, we must believe in the word of the Lord and the word of the Lord alone. And as you stand in the word, you stand committed unto him, nothing should be able to shake you, nothing should be able to take you out of his presence. Acts of the Apostle chapter 4. Acts of the Apostle chapter 4 verse 13. It says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, so which means boldness, commitment, dedication can be seen. They perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. It says people marveled and took knowledge of them that they have been with Jesus. So in a season like this, it does not matter what the economy might be saying. It does not matter what is going around within or even with outside the church. It says we should stand courageous. We should stand bold in the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And the last one we deduce maybe for this uh, night is that our greatest potential, man's greatest potential, comes as a result of his commitment to God. This year, we are maximizing potential. We are manifesting potentials. To achieve this, we must be committed. We must align to God. Praise the name of the Lord. If you do not faint, you will reap in due season. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. It says, And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we fail not. What we are saying in essence is there is no testimonies without a test. These three evil men went through trials, went through persecutions. They stood resolute in the Lord. They were not divided. They stood strong all together. And at the end of the day, in verse 30 of that scripture we read, the Bible says the king promoted them. Praise the name of the Lord. So perhaps you've been going through what we may call fire of life. Things are looking tough. Things are looking difficult. Some of us might even be asking God, God, where are you? Why all this? Why this fire? I'm going, I'm facing death. And it looks as if nothing is happening. As long as you stand dedicated to God, a fourth man will show up. Because God sees our dedication. Praise the name of the Lord. Mind you, we are looking at the dividends of dedication. And before I proceed into the story proper, I think it's proper to describe or to define what dedication is. But even before we do that, if we go back to the main incident in that story, in Daniel chapter 3, verse 1. Daniel 3, 1. Take us back, sorry. It says, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold. I think we need to understand this proper so that we'll be able to appreciate commitment we're talking about. If I may ask, in our contemporary time, what can constitute an image? Because I believe in these modern days, we don't see images, do we? Except for the figurines, maybe we might see, maybe if you pay a visit to the Eco Hotel or some other places. But to bring it to our contemporary daytime, what are some of those things? What, is it possible to have, for people to have images in this modern daytime, or it's a story that belongs to the old? Is it possible? And if yes, what are some of those things that will constitute images? This is a Bible study, so we're not preaching. We're, we stand here to learn. Is it possible to have images in these our contemporary times? Do we have any takers? Anybody wants to help us with this? Yes, sir. Ushers, please help us. Microphone. I think there is one here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our jobs, our businesses. In fact, image is anything you put above God. Anything that takes the place of God. In, in, is, is, is an image for worship. So sometimes our jobs, 
our businesses takes that place. Can we put so our hands together for Jesus? That's beautiful. So which means what we're trying to do in essence tonight is so that we'll be able to understand properly what we're talking about. Because when we say King Nebuchadnezzar set up an image, we might be looking at a picture of probably a figurine where, you know, they designed and all what, as we read in that story. But bringing it forth because of modernization, Satan is so tricky. And that's why the Bible says we should be careful. We should, be, we should watch out for the wiles, for the tricks of the enemy. So which means in our modern days, we can say our jobs can constitute a golden image. We agree with that. Beautiful. Yes, what are other ones? Let's learn. Let's talk. No envelope today, but I believe the envelope will come here after. Praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think our money can also be an idol. Our money? Yeah, if you put money above people, above your fellow man, that money has become an idol to you. Because men are more important than money. So if you put your money above men's needs, you have the ability to help somebody, but you don't help him. You turn away from the person. That means you value your money above your, your brethren. And the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. So your neighbor should come before your money. Mm-hmm. Amen. Really that's what I say. So do we agree that it's possible that money can be a golden image? But to start with, is money bad? Is it good to have money? As a matter of fact, I think the scripture says even money answers all things. But it says the love of money. So I think the love of money can constitute an image. The Trinity Tower is there. We are believing God um, to help us satisfy all the financial obligation before us. And you are there. The Lord is ministering to you. He's telling you that investment, that I do funds, terminate this, give it to my work. And you are using mathematics. You are using calculator to calculate. And you are telling God, this money is for a special project. At that time, it's a possibility that you have carved a golden image like Nebuchadnezzar did, and you have placed it above God. Yes, so we said uh, the first thing, our job can be an image, can be an idol, uh, money can be an idol. Yes, what is us want to help us? Praise God. Hallelujah. Our phones. Our phones? Yes. Wow. Our Do we image. agree with that? How? How can that be? Because sometimes we don't normally pray, sometimes we use our phones, and sometimes the devil brings some things online where our mind will go through, and um, we we'll forget that um, there's God. So we we'll focus our mind on the things online. So most especially we, the students, sometimes we do see rubbish on the phone, and we we'll try to remove it, but still, yeah, the things will still come back, like Google, Instagram, and some other things. Sir. Amen. Amen. He says our phone. Even, uh, bro, it's not only students. Is it possible in the church that as the service is going on like this, some are browsing, people tweet, people WhatsApp, people do stuff. As pastor is sweating. You know, it's not easy preaching without AC. And some people have the audacity. You will be pressing phone. So at that time, you have placed your phones. That's what bro is trying to say. You have placed it above your God. Perhaps you are one of those who have aligned with King Nebuchadnezzar, serving an idol. Yes. Okay. What other? Oh, yes, sir. Let's have you. Maybe we'll take two more, then we, we move on from there. Another one I can say, uh, spouse. Can we be more Our audible? Spouse. Our, Our spouse. Like. Our spouse. Our relationship. Exactly. Uh, let me say, for instance, um, a wife may say that um, I'm not doing this thing because my husband says so. Knowing that that thing is something that ought to be done, but because her husband says so. So she's like putting her husband above God's commandment or the right, doing the right thing. Praise the Lord. Hmm. Pastor, do we agree with that? I thought the Bible says two shall be one. Do we agree with that? Yes, it's very correct. What we are saying in essence is that placing your relationship above God can become an idol as at that time. It's possible. Maybe some of us would have been in church today, but because of our friends, of that girlfriend, of that boyfriend, 
who has promised to keep an appointment with you today, you forsook the church. And remember, the Bible says the coming of the Son of Man shall be like a thief in the night. It will come at a time nobody expects, at a time nobody knows. Perhaps it might come in the course of that time when you place your relationship above God and Jesus comes. What would you say? Yes, yes. So I hope we are taking note. We said our job can be an idol, our money can be an idol, even our gadgets, our somebody, what of television? How can our TV be an idol? After all, we watch educative program through it. Can somebody help me out? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why, why our TV can be an idol to us? When we are supposed to pray or do, or do something or read our Bible, and we decided that I want to watch uh, I do, I want to watch uh, the Sea World, I want to watch. So you left what you are supposed to do, what supposed what you are supposed to do at that time. Maybe your relationship with God, pray your, and you you are you are and you are watching all, and you are watching all those. Uh, things. Those programs. Praise the name of the Lord. This applies especially to the men. Championship League. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. There's a Bible study on Tuesday and there's we have a Championship League on that same day. Some of us would rather sacrifice our being in the presence of the Lord instead to watch such a program. Not necessarily Football, like it says, for the women, all those series programs, you know them. So we need to watch out because, you know, when we read this story, uh, we could have just taken it to mean, oh, maybe just that was the king. But this, in our temp- contemporary time also, is could apply to us. So we need to watch out. What we are saying in essence is anything that requires your attention, anything that would make you to forget God, that will arrest your interest more than that of God, could be an idol. Perhaps this was what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego understood. Because if you read that story very well, it was just an harmless, I mean, an harmless request. This is what is in vogue. This is what everyone was doing. You just hear the music. The video is playing. Whiskey is playing. And as soon as you hear it, just, you know, just tune into it. Just give him some dancing moves. That may be all. So harmless. It appears, you know, no evil attached to it. But we must be discerning. Praise the name of the Lord. That others are doing it may not necessarily make it to be right. You should choose to stand out. We should dare to be different. Praise the name of the Lord. So anything that requires our attention, anything that takes our gaze away from the Lord could be an idol. And that's what we're talking about tonight. That's why we're studying about these gentlemen, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So because of time, let me move briefly. So we're talking about dedication. We could see their commitment. Because they were dedicated to God, they couldn't careless what people will say. They stood firm. They stood on their belief, and then the fourth man showed up on their behalf. I pray tonight that in, as we journey back to our various homes today, we will have an encounter with the fourth man in the name of Jesus. So what is dedication? Dedication, simply put, as it relates to us this evening, is a non-negotiable commitment of man to God. You cannot negotiate it. You cannot buy your way out. God is looking for us. Praise the name of the Lord. Dedication also means a relationship. A relationship with God. We are nothing and nobody is allowed to come in between. Praise the name of the Lord. God is a jealous God. The God we serve is a jealous God. And this same God is a relationship God. God is looking for relationship. And he's looking for you, he's looking for I, myself. And he's looking for that relationship where we will allow nothing 
no television, no money, no relationship, no nothing, no idols or whatsoever to come in between us. I'm sure you remember the story very well in the book of Genesis chapter 12. Genesis 12 verse 1, when God called Abraham, he says, Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and out of thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. You see, when the Lord calls, he calls, he's looking for commitment. He's looking for dedication. As he called Abraham here, he was asking him, leave your country, leave your kinsmen, leave your townsmen, leave anything that would distract you of concentration with, between me and you. Get out of them, jettison all those, and focus on me. And until we get there, we cannot have an experience of the fourth man. Praise the name of the Lord. What we are saying in essence is that dedication implies taking side with God where everyone else is on the other side. The Lord is asking us to dare to be different. So briefly we begin to move on. What are the dividends? What are those things we stand to gain as we stand dedicated to God? As we stand, you know, committed to God? The first thing I have here is that we have preservation. As we read in that story in Daniel, the Lord will preserve his people. Malachi chapter 3 verse 17. Malachi chapter 3 verse 17. It says, And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spear them, as a man speareth his own son that serveth him. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were committed to the Lord. And because of their commitment, they were speared, even in the face of fire. Praise the name of the Lord. My prayer for us today, as your amen becomes resounding, is that there will be a divine preservation upon us and all, all our household in the name of Jesus. To be preserved is to be defended by God. To be defended by God is to be delivered by God. This man says we care less. Even if God will not deliver us, we stand resolute with our decision. We will not bow. We will stand dedicated. We will stand committed to God. And we saw the Lord. The fourth man came up for them. I pray in this month, in this week, of the anniversary of Jesus Christ, the Lord will show up for us in Jesus' name. The Lord will defend us in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will deliver his church in the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. The second thing we gain as we stand dedicated to God is intervention. Intervention. Luke chapter 1 verse 13. Luke 1 13. Maybe we'll pick from verse 5 so that we understand better. It says in verse 5, Luke 1 5, it says, There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. He says, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And in verse 17, we saw, verse 17, we jump there. He says, sorry, Luke 1, 13 now, sorry. I mean verse 13 now. It says, But the angel of the Lord, and but the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Praise the name of the Lord. The answer to your prayers is waiting for you at the place of your dedication. As you stand dedicated unto the Lord, just as we read the account of Zechariah, he was dedicated, committed, devoted unto the Lord. The Bible says God answers his prayer. So as we stand dedicated, we see the Lord intervening in our lives, in our affairs, in the name of Jesus. And I pray for us that in this season, the Lord will show up on our behalf. The fourth man will show up for us in the name of Jesus. In John 15 verse 16, John 15 verse 16 says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. You want God to answer your prayers? Stand committed unto him. This year we have been told, I mean last year we were told, 
that in the next 10 years, by 2032, the redeemed Christian church of God, every parish must double. We should win souls. We are believing God for millions, about 4 million souls. Praise the name of the Lord. And this is our job. This is what the Lord expects us to do. No wonder the devil is so hungry. Because he knows that whatever Christians set their eyes to do, he says he knows we will do it. And that is why you want to bring distractions, you want to bring gimmicks, you want to bring whatsoever. We should rather ignore him and focus on the kingdom assignment. The kingdom assignment is to win souls to God. So many things are happening all over. There's corruption everywhere. There's perversion everywhere. People are killing people. People are committing suicide. Every day people are dying. As armies of the Lord, end time armies of Christ, our assignment is to rescue them. To bring them, snatch them away from the jaw of hell. And Satan knows. And that is why he wants to distract us. But we will not be distracted. Can somebody say, I will not be distracted? We will stay committed. We will stay united. We will stay dedicated in the name of Jesus. And as you stay so, the Lord will answer all your prayers in the name of Jesus. So the first thing we, stand, we gain is we will be preserved. There will be preservation. Secondly, there will be intervention. Thirdly, there will be revelation. There will be revelation. We will have access to deeper things of life. First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. First Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. It says, But as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear as had, neither have it as it entered into the heart of men, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. The Lord has a lot in store for us. No wonder the devil, no wonder the enemy is angry. And for by the special grace of God, God's purpose for our lives shall be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians 2, 20 says, For I, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This can only be said of the dedicated. And that is why we're encouraging ourselves. This is the week of the passion of Christ. Over 2,000 years ago, Christ came to die for us. He died to reconcile us back to God. And we should be able to reciprocate the same gesture by being dedicated unto him. So that we can talk like Brother Paul said. That the life we live now is not of our own. We live for God. We live for Christ. And that will be our testimonies in the name of Jesus. So as we stay dedicated, we'll be preserved. God will intervene in our situations. He will answer our prayers. There will be revelation. Also, there will be supplies. There will be provisions. The Lord will meet every supply. I read earlier, Matthew 6, 33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing you need in life. Long life, good health, good jobs, name it, shall be added unto you. But first and foremost, it says you should seek him first. Stand committed. Stay dedicated unto him. And as you do that, the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Luke 22, verse 35. Luke 22, verse 35. It says, And he said unto them, when I sent you without pause and script and shoes, lack ye anything? And they said nothing. The Lord we are talking about is a faithful God. And that's why I said earlier at the foundation that God is not a user. The Lord is a lifter. The Lord is a rewarder. Do you need anything in life? Are you desirous of anything? You are praying to God for anything in life? Then you need the intervention of the fourth man. And for the fourth man to be engaged in your situation, you must be committed unto him. And as you do this, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Also, when we stay dedicated, we receive anointing. We receive unction. I said earlier, 
that we have been commissioned, we have been mandated to go out onto the world and reach out unto sinners. The church needs power. We need divine empowerment. And this can only come in the place of dedication. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. I want to point our attention to something there. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. It says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. All with one accord. They were all with one accord in a place. They were together in unity. There is power in unity. There is revival in unity. This is a season where we as body of Christ, especially in this church, we need to stand together. We need to stand as one. And as they stand, it says, suddenly there came a power from on high. The church needs revival. The church of God needs fire. We need power. We cannot reach out unto souls of our own, our own power. We need the power of God. Until we are together, until we are united, the power wouldn't come. And that is why there is a need for us to stand in unity, to stand together. Imagine if Meshach had pointed accusing finger onto Abednego, or Abednego has you know, accused the other person that it was because of your fault. We would have just served this God and we would have gone. They would have been divided. And the Bible says, iron sharpened iron. They stood together. They were in unity. They were in one accord. Even to the point of death, they stood together. No wonder the fourth man showed up on their behalf. Beloved, we need the power of God. We are in the hand time. Jesus Christ is coming soon. When he says when all these things are happening, nations rising against nations, brothers are killing brothers, many things are happening. He says, lo, behold, the coming of the Son of Man is very close. The church is gradually forgetting the second coming of Christ. It's as if Jesus is not coming again. Beloved, by the reason of this week, we need to remind ourselves that Jesus is coming again. And he's coming for a church without spot, without wrinkle. It's coming for a church dwelling in power. And that is why we need the revival. As end time armies of Christ, we need to be endowed with power. We need power to heal. How many of us can lay and pray on ordinary headache? How many of us can our shadow raise the dead? The Lord says, greater works than this shall ye do. God has committed unto us, but we need revival. We need power. So as a church, this is a time for us to stay together in one accord. As we stay together in one accord, just as it happened in the day of Pentecost, it will happen to us in the name of Jesus. And that revival will spread right from the city of David in the name of Jesus. So there is a need for us to stay together. Psalms 89 verse 20. Verse, it's in Psalms 89 verse 20. See, talking about the anointing. We say, verse 20, the Lord is speaking here. He says, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. Meaning what? Meaning that the Lord is looking for who to anoint. The Lord is looking for who to send. And as you get anointed with, from verse 21, he says, With whom my hand shall be established, my hand also will strengthen him. The Lord is looking for vessels. He's looking for willing vessels. Verse 22 says, the enemy will not be able to exert upon him, nor the son of wickedness will be able to afflict him. These are Christians. These are soldiers Jesus is looking for. But this can only come when we stand committed to him. David was a man after God's heart. No wonder he found him with his holy oil. So as we get home, we can read further. That's Psalm 89 from verse 20 down. We'll see the benefit of anointing. And beloved, we need power. We need spiritual empowerment. And as we do this, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. The Lord will empower his church for this end time assignment in the name of Jesus. We will not be distracted. We will not be divided in the name of Jesus. We will stand and the fourth man will appear for us in the name of Jesus. The last thing we gain 
as we stay dedicated to him, is that we will have direction. Beloved, there's confusion all over the world. People are looking for true God. People are seeking we, where is the way. But as we stay committed to God, we'll be able to understand that Jesus Christ is the truth, is the way, and is the life that people are looking for. Psalms 23, verses 1, all through to verse 4. Psalms 23, verse 4, I mean from verse 1. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. When the, you make the Lord, when you, you are committed unto him, when you are dedicated unto him, the first thing he says is that you will not lack anything in life. He says, since I was born, and now I'm getting old, he says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. It is not in our place to be a beggar. But perhaps you are in lack because maybe your commitment level is not yet up to. And that is why I'm challenging us tonight that we should get more dedicated unto him. He says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. What is that saying? Thousand may be falling by your sides and ten thousand by your right. He says you will only be hearing of it. You will not partake of it. May I prophesy into your life as only you, if your amen can be louder. In this season, no matter what is happening around, thousands may be falling, millions may be collapsing. For you, the Lord will preserve you. Yeah. You will not be victims of ritual killers. Yeah. You will not be victims of kidnappers in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You will not backslide. Yeah. You will end it well yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Verse 3 says, He restored my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his sake. He says, Yo, verse 4, Yea, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he says, I will fear no evil. Why? Because he is with me. How do you know he's with you? Because you are committed to him. If you are in a relationship, you know you are in a relationship. If you are with God, you will know that God is with you. And that is why whenever we talk about second coming of Christ, we see a lot of us, we reject. We wonder, I hope I'm qualified. If you are qualified, you will know you are qualified. If you are righteous, you know you are righteous. And how do we do this? And that's why we say stay committed with the Lord. Then you will be able to have that testimony in Psalm 23 that we just read to ourselves. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. This season, the anniversary of Christ is coming to die for you and I must not be in vain. We must be revived. Get dedicated to God. Get committed to God. And as you do that, the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. In conclusion, what am I saying in essence since? Just with two summary. Hebrews 11.6. I read it earlier. Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What is that saying? If you forget every other thing, don't forget this. I'm going to tell you now. That the pursuit of God attracts rewards from God. As you seek him, as you get dedicated to him, as you are devoted to him, you stand to gain a lot. That's all we're saying in essence. And secondly, Revelation chapter 3, verse 11, Revelation 3, 11, it says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. You should not allow anyone, no situation, no circumstance, no events happening around to take your crown. Because the end of the world is nearer than the beginning. John 14, from verse 1. John 14, 1. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. He says, believe also in me. Verse 2 says, he says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, 
I would have told you. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to this world. He died for our sins. And he has gone to prepare the place for us. And he assures us. He says, I will surely come back. He says, when I'm done, verse 3 says, when I'm done with it, he says, I will come for you. When he comes, will he meet you ready? I hope when he comes, he won't meet you gossiping. I hope when he comes, he won't meet you backbiting, holding on to unforgiveness, being distracted by activities of life. Beloved, Jesus is coming. And that is the essence of this week. We are celebrating the death and the resurrection of Christ. What does it mean to you? Is it to eat Easter chicken? Go out on picnic? That's not all about it. This is a time to reach out unto the unreached. Go tell about Jesus to everyone. This is our assignment. Forget all this is happening. We come together as a church. We pull together and we will be able to surprise the Lord. That at the end, it will say, well done. Faithful servants. I pray that that will be our reward in the name of Jesus. What we are saying in essence is Jesus is coming again. This world is like a marketplace. We are easily distracted. There's confusion everywhere. These are wiles. These are the tricks of the devil. So that we lose our crown. But in the name of Jesus, none of us seated here and those watching online will lose our rewards in the name of Jesus. We will not lose our salvation in the name of Jesus. We will not be distracted in the name of Jesus. We will stand together. Beloved, this is a time we need the power of God. We need his presence. And perhaps you are here today, you have not accepted Christ. Into your life as your Lord and your Savior. Either you are here or you are watching online. You can deceive the pastors, you can deceive the church, but you can't deceive your maker. Today is the acceptable day. Today is the right time to rededicate your life unto him. Perhaps you used to be a Christian, but you are giving it up all. Due to activities and challenges and distractions of life, the essence of this week is so that you can reconcile yourself back to God. You are not yet you used to be dedicated. There's a need, there's a room for rededication. And if you have never at any point in time at all accepted Christ into your life, this is a time for you to dedicate all of your life unto him. Remember I said at the beginning, God created us for his own purpose. The essence of you being created is so that you can serve him. So while all lies are clo- b- bowed, you are there, you want to say, Lord Jesus, I need you into my life. I want to accept you into my life today. I want to be dedicated. I want to be devoted unto you. I do not want this season of Easter to be in vain in my life. Wherever you are, those online or you are here physically, I want you to place your right hand upon your chest. I just want to pray with you. I want you to talk to the Lord. I want you to invite him. I want to say, Lord, I need you in my life. Place your right hand there. And as you do that, the Lord will bless you. And as you're doing that, just begin to talk to him. That Father, I just want to dedicate my life unto you today. By the reason of this season, I want to surrender my life unto you. Perhaps you are there. Can you rise up if you are physically here? I just want to be sure you are around. I want to just pray with you. There's nothing to be ashamed of. This is the acceptable day. This is the acceptable time. Can you rise to your feet? God bless you. God bless you. Just stand quietly on your feet. I just want to just pray with you. So that you will be said that you were there in church that day and you heard this. Just stand up. There's nothing to be ashamed of. If you are clapping, clap for the Lord. And perhaps you are there online. You are also watching online. You want to say, Lord Jesus, I want to surrender my life unto you. I want to invite you to him today. I want you to tell you. If you are online, you can rise up wherever you are. But if you are there physically, you can come. Come to the altar. There's nothing to be ashamed of. If you are coming, come. Come. You want to say, Lord Jesus, I want to surrender my life unto you. I want to be dedicated unto you. I don't want to be caught by the spirit of the end time. I don't want to be left over. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name, O Lord. The rest of us, I want to thank God. Is there anybody? Thank you, Lord. Thank God for salvation. I want us to talk to the Lord as I drop the microphone. I want you to talk to the Lord. Say, Father. Shout it louder. Say, Father, I ask 
for a fresh mantle of dedication on my life in the name of Jesus. Talk to him. You know, the Bible says, in the last day, perilous time shall come. The love of many shall wax cold. Is your love waxing cold? Talk to the Lord today. The Lord let a fresh mantle of dedication, of commitment unto you come upon my life today. Pray unto him. Ask of him. Let's keep clapping. It's time for our offerings. All our various offerings. Uh, please get your envelopes. Ushers, please make sure everyone has they have their envelopes. Uh, brethren. There's no doubt that uh, we have been richly blessed this evening by the sermon. And um, all we have to do in the spirit of the season is to appreciate God by giving our offering. You know, all our various offerings, it's right there on the screen. Please. Thank you, Jesus. If we are ready, please let's be on our feet. And let's pray over this offering. If then a rock of ages. We worship you. We glorify your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give back. Lord, we pray that you use this offering, Lord, to enlarge our coasts, to bless us like never before. This season, it shall be well with us. We will proclaim your words. We will proclaim your business. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. the voices in Zion and apostles. Amen. So for the rest of the week, we have quite a few uh, powerful anointed service lined up to celebrate this Passion Week. Uh, tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m., we have the Kappa DM Early Morning Fellowship uh, in the sanctuary. Uh, our meetings of the Lord, the women, the ladies of the City of David will meet at 12.30 p.m. with uh, Pastor Shiju in the sanctuary. Praise the Lord. On Thursday, we have, um, we have a special communion service on Thursday from 6.30 p.m. in the 
in the sanctuary to again to to um, celebrate the Last Supper. So 6:30 p.m. in the sanctuary, Holy Communion service. On Friday we have a Let's Go Out Fishing uh, outreach, and we have special invitation cards for them. Uh, the ushers will please uh, distribute the cards. It's themed the resurrection and the life. The resurrection and the life. It's a movie, worship, and prayer service combined. And the movie title is The pa uh, Passion of the Christ. The Passion of the Christ. Time is 4 p.m. So Friday, 29th March, uh, Good Friday, 4 p.m. And the service will take place at Trinity Towers. Trinity Towers. Please invite others. Take the enough cards to go around. Uh, please tell others about the special service. Uh, same Sunday, 31st March, Easter Sunday. One service only 8 a.m. at Trinity Towers across the road. We also have tracks uh, and other invitation cards that you can um, use in inviting others that you can use to minister Christ, particularly this period. Share our testimonies, share the love of Christ, and God will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, for tonight, we want to welcome a special group of people, those worshiping with us for the first time at the City of David, or at a Tuesday service like this. Please rise. For the City of David, welcome. Kindly rise. Any first time? Around? Thank you, sir. Welcome, sir. Uh, please, let's extend the City of David. Welcome to him. And please take your belongings and go, go to the corner. Uh, we have members of our hospitality team waiting to receive you. We welcome you to the city of David, where the love of God reigns, where dreams come true, where legends are born, where tomorrow's history, tomorrow's testimony is experienced today. Thank you for fellowship with us. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we please rise to close the service? Our Lord and our Savior, we bless you. We thank you for bringing us to this last Tuesday in the month of March. Lord, we are grateful for preservation. Thank you for the salvation of our souls. Thank you for the miracle of the cross over 2,000 years ago that is still availing for us. Father, we are grateful. We pray for grace never to return back to our vomits, never to return back to perdition in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord God Almighty, everything in our lives, that represents a golden idol, we ask that you please uproot in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, just as you showed us unconditional love, we ask, Lord, for help to love you with all of our strength, to love you with all of our might, to love you with all of our mind, to love you with all of our strength and power and in the name of Jesus, to love you with all of our, our substance in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for choosing us, Father, Lord God Almighty. You are more than able to help us to excel in this walk. You are more than able to help us to be committed and be dedicated, even unto the end of the mighty name of Jesus. We won't fail you in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not disappoint you in the mighty name of Jesus. Please let your strength be perfected in every area of weakness in our lives under the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father and our God. Even as we journey with you this week, Lord God Almighty, Father, Lord God Almighty, your presence will abide with us in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go tonight, let your presence go with us. Let your presence abide with us. Preserve us from all evil. Preserve our going out. Preserve our coming in in the mighty name of Jesus. When we gather again next Tuesday, none of us shall be missing in the mighty name of Jesus. And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. 
Amen. Please be seated. Please. Greetings, dear members of City of David. We're absolutely thrilled to extend an invitation to you for an extraordinary experience of spiritual elevation and renewal during our ESTAR 2024 event, Seven Days to Change Your World, themed The Fourth Man. Each day of this remarkable week is dedicated to prayer and deepening our understanding of the events preceding the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's explore what awaits us each day. Commencing on Sunday, March 24th, with the triumphal entry, we reflect on Jesus' journey to Jerusalem, offering prayers of gratitude for salvation, seeking divine intervention in our lives as we pursue our set goals. Monday, March 25th, marks the day of the fig tree with it, underscoring the significance of unwavering faith. Our prayers will center on removing obstacles hindering spiritual growth and authority. Tuesday, March 26th, focuses on the teachings at the temple, urging believers to exercise authority and endurance in faith. Together, we'll pray for the spread of the gospel and resilience against worldly temptations. On Wednesday, March 27th, we'll explore the plots and anointing at Bethany, emphasizing strength in weakness. Our prayers will seek divine strength to endure trials and witness the manifestation of God's glory. Thursday, March 28th, is dedicated to the Lord's Supper and prayer, fostering unity and seeking grace and strength as we navigate trials. Join us on Friday, March 29th, as we solemnly commemorate the crucifixion, standing firm in faith amidst life challenges. According to Matthew 27, 1 to 61, let's reflect on the sacrificial love of our savior together. Saturday, March 30th is dedicated to conquering fear and doubt, drawing inspiration from Jesus' triumph over adversaries. We'll pray for victory and the manifestation of miracles. Finally, on Sunday, March 31st, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, affirming his unshakable kingdom with hearts full of gratitude. Beloved, mark your calendars and join us for this spiritually enriching journey. Let's unite as a community and experience the transformative power of ISTA. Stay connected with daily prayer points by scanning the QR code, clicking the link or visiting our website at www.cityofdavidng.org forward slash prayer. Mm -hmm.